Okay, we are back at it again. Okay, we are back at it again. Um, the fourth and final installment of our Rhino things. Um, the first, the three Rhino tutorials. The first three tutorials were aimed at first years, um, very much like very introductory level stuff to Rhino. The part four one is a little different. This is applicable for like essentially anybody. There's a lot of things in Rhino you now throughout school because it's like the software is so self-taught. Taught. It's so self-taught that um, there's a lot of little things that maybe you just never encounter or um, you never run into online and then nobody tells you that these things exist, but you know, these are sort of the things that I've, I've learned over time from like, you know, working with people from work or from just like people telling me, you know, I've, I've asked people, I'm like, oh, like, you guys got any like cool tips and stuff? And they're like, oh, I got one. So yeah, this is sort of like an agglomeration of those things. Um, there might be a little bit of overlap with some of the basic stuff, but it's mostly going to be new stuff and like, it's some stuff that even in the basics like um older students just have not encountered before and they're just like oh my god that exists that's so helpful so that's what we're gonna go through today um i have a list it's it's a seemingly random list of stuff but yeah let's get started so the first one um it's the selection box um most people drag this way but this, if whatever you touch when you drag this way gets selected, whatever you touch when you drag the other way from the bottom left to the top right, um, you have to encompass an entire object to have it selected. So that's the first tip. Um, the second one is we're gonna talk about select last and select previous. So these ones are a little interesting. So select last and select previous. So if I were to click on this box and like this box, let's say, and this is my current selection, right? And then I have to click somewhere else. Um, if I were to do select previous, it'll select my previous selection. So let's say like you are doing something super mind numbingly dull, like you're trying to pick out all the lines that are a specific angle or something. And then, you know, you like, oops, haha, fat finger. I, you accidentally click and you remove your selection, right? You cancel your selection. You're like, oh my God, now I have to go select all one 9,000 lines again. No, you don't. You can just do select previous, right? It selects your previous selection. And then the other one, select last. Okay, it, like, it might get a little confusing, but select last essentially selects your previous modified selection. So let's say if I were to take this line, I were to move it, right? And I were to do select last, it selects the previous line that I moved. Um, and this works for other stuff, like if you do union objects, etc. cetera. Um, so like using that example, if I were to like move this line again, but then I would go and click on like, I would go like click on a bunch of these lines instead. You can see that doing select last gives me the line I moved. Doing select previous, oh, I guess, because I just selected it with select last. Yeah, that's a terrible example. But yeah, whatever you previously selected, select previous. Whatever you last actually modified, select last. Okay, that's the, <laughs> that's the concise summary. Um, you can also do selection for things by layer. So let's see, I have, a, I have a nice little building here. If I were to right click on the railings layer and I do select objects, I would select all of these um, objects. Yeah. And in, in cases where you do like, you know, if you were to make 2D something, if you were to make 2D something, make 2D usually has sub layers, right? And so under these sub layers, you can see that actually all these lines are actually on the curves layer. So what you can do is if you want to have like, you want to select all these lines, sometimes you have like hidden as well um, under make 2D, you can just right click, you select, select sub layer objects and it selects all the objects in your sub layers as well, um, which is useful. Okay, goodbye, goodbye to that. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. So we're going to talk about OSNAP for a second. So for OSNAP, there is a really cool function where, um, and Angela taught me this actually, Angela Viaje. Uh, so I got, I got to give credit where credit is due. But if you were to right click on OSNAP down here, 
you would isolate essentially that single type of snap. So like let's say you're working with some geometry that has a lot of intersections like this, right? And I want to only draw lines or I only want to draw points on where I have uh, midpoints, right? But then there's all this stuff in the way like endpoints and whatever. I would just right click on midpoint and then now I would only get midpoints where are the midpoints there, right? And if I were to right click it again, I would get my previous selection of uh, object snaps back, which is super useful. Uh, it's really quick. I don't know how people even discover this. Like, <laughs> it's so obscure. Uh, let's see, what else? I think some of these things you already know if you have gumball on and you hold alt and you drag the arrow, you du duplicate the object. Um, but you can also click on the arrow. And then if you hold alt and click on the arrow and then you type in a unit, um, it would just duplicate it, that number of units in that direction. Um, you can also do things with units, like let's say if you draw lines, like if I want to draw a line and I'm, I know that the line is 25 like centimeters or something right now, and this, this file is in millimeters right now, right? So like if I did just put 25, I would get um, a line that's 25. 25 millimeters in length, but if I were to input 25 cm, it would give me a 25 centimeter line, right? And this works for inches and stuff like that, like 25 inch, you know, etc. Like you can, yeah, whatever units you want. Uh, it's super simple. And inputting, yeah, so you can also put move stuff to certain coordinates. So we all know like the Cartesian system, otherwise, you know. If you don't know the Cartesian system, <laughs> you need to learn it. But you know the whole x, y, z, um, and there are coordinate points in here, right? This is the whole like the fabric of reality that Rhino is constructed on. And let's say I want to move something to a certain location, you can just do move. Uh, you click the point to move from, and then you can type the actual point um, in the coordinate system where you want to move from. So like zero, 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 right? So zero X, zero Y, zero Z, and it moves it right to the center, right? So that's super useful. Um, and it works for a lot of things, right? So let's, what else is there? Hold shift to turn off ortho. So you can, like let's say if I'm drawing a line and you can see down here I have ortho off. If I hold shift, ortho turns on, right? That's just like super shift, no shift, shift, no shift. Super easy tip. Um, for smart track, you can do, let's say I draw another line. Um, and like, you, you want to like turn on smart track points over here. So like you just hover over it, but it's kind of annoying. Like you have to wait or something. It's like, you know, you're like hovering over it and like the smart track point, like just refuses to disappear or you, you accidentally create one, right? You can press control and it just gets rid of it. So like, you can just con use control to like turn it on and off on that point. Um, you can also use tab to lock directions. So let's say if I'm moving this and I only want to move it in one direction, right? I want to lock it to this vector. I press tab and it's now locked. So it only slides along that vector, which is super useful. Um, you can also move vertical translation only. So if I were to do move and then there's a vertical no over here, you just type V and then it's vertical, yes. And now it will only move vertically, right? Which is also super, super, super useful. Let's see. Uh, okay, so next one, this one's like a little bit, um, this is like the holy grail, okay? So if you go to options, um, there will be under Rhino options here, there's aliases, right? And aliases are basically like, instead of like typing the line command all the time, like going L-I-N-E, right? That took me like a second. And then drawing a line, instead you can just type A and it calls the line command, right? So like, like how much faster is that? Instead of like taking both hands off the keyboard, both hands, one hand off the mouth and putting, <laughs> one hand off your mouse and putting both hands on the keyboard, you can instead just type A. Right? You don't even have to take your hand off your mouse and it just makes things so much faster. You can do this for so many like different commands, you know, like, um, and the best, the best part is you can also insert macros, right? Like 
you can have multiple commands linked together. So like, let's say if I have this set of boxes and I want to union them together, you know, I'll do Boolean union, but then I still have like these existing artifacts of like the previous box where like I can still select this endpoint, I can still select this endpoint and it doesn't look very clean, right? So I want to do like merge all faces um, just to make it one face. You can actually turn that into one command where if you just, if you have like the alias set up um, and I have a set of FF, like it just does both commands um, by inputting one, right? So it just calls both commands. And there's like, you can set up like strings of commands to just like execute on its own to like perform more like complex tasks. And how you do that is you go to options, you go under aliases, and under here you can type your alias, and then the actual command that you want to execute. Um, and there is a very specific sort of like syntax like language to um, the command macro itself. So you can see here that a lot of these start with underscore. Um, and underscore is important because some of you may be running Rhino in um, your native language or like a different language. And Rhino in different languages has like commands for different languages, right? Like Rhino in French, circle is not circle, right? Circle like in French Rhino is like sir, sir, circle. It's not pronounced that way. My French is terrible, but you know, um, but Rhino in English doesn't recognize that command. Um, and likewise, if you type circle into Rhino in French, it would just be like, what are you saying? Je ne sais pas. Like, I don't understand. So what you can do is you input the underscore in front of the command macro that you're trying to call. And it forces French Rhino to run the command uh, to, force, to force the English command, essentially. So this way, this command macro will work in any version of Rhino, um, be it like French, Chinese, or whatever the language of Rhino you're using in. Yeah, um, what was I gonna say? Right, and then there's also exclamation points. So if you look at, say, I'm trying to find one with exclamation. Let's say move over here. Move has exclamation point, and exclamation point cancels the previous command. Um, so let's say if I'm doing like line, right? I have a line command. I'm halfway through the line command, and I input move. Right, the line command just gets killed because of the exclamation point. Um, and there, there's like a lot of different, there's a lot of different syntax like things you can do with these like the apostrophe and stuff like that. There's there's like a whole list of them, um, and I'll post a link down below so that you guys can like check it out if you want to like really get into um, writing like lists of commands and like how those work. Um, yeah, that's aliases. So like, it, it should make you work like way faster, because you can just do really short letters for like complex commands. And what I'll do is I'll also try to post my personal list of aliases just in case like you guys don't know where to start with creating your own, and then you guys can like go and tweak it like however you want. And so apart from aliases, there's also hotkeys, which is a different story. Um, under here, you'll see keyboard as well in the options, and. In keyboard, this refers to very specific keys and key combinations that are not like the usual A, B, C, D. It's, it's separate from aliases, right? So you see most of these are blank, but um, my personal favorites are just like F1 to F4. Uh, F1, I think default, it's help, but I just have it to this set of commands where it's like set display mode and wireframe. So if you were to come into, you just press F1, F2, F3, F4, it just switches your um, display mode, right? Otherwise, you would have to do like set display mode and then like type M for mode and then you type like W for wireframe or something, um, which is a lot slower. What else do I have? Bum, bum, bum. Sorry, I'm just reading through my notes. Oh! Mouse key bindings. Um, this is specific to your individual setup, but like, get a get a nice mouse and preferably one with more buttons. Like mine has like mine has like thumb buttons, and I I have one map to delete, so that like I can just like see my I'm not even touching the keyboard. Like I can just delete stuff, or and I have the other one map to move. Um, but this depends on like your mouse and your mouse and your individual mouse software. 
and you can set it up there but it's like super useful um what else you can also okay so we're gonna talk about zoom so in rhino there's a bunch of zoom commands if you just type zoom you'll see that there's a bunch of options for zooming um and usually if you just type zoom is mapped to just z so if you just type z and you drag a window it'll zoom you to that window but the useful the really useful ones are like zs zoom selected where it will just zoom on your selected object um and this is really good for when like you can't find things like you have something selected but you don't know where on the cartesian plane like it is you can just do zoom selected you can also do like zoom extents which zooms to the extents of everything um but yeah like look in the zoom options and you can like see sort of like just play around with it there's a lot of stuff you can do and it just makes makes things so much faster like zoom selected and like um zooming in on specific points so for working um or in an organized fashion there's stuff you can do such as like isolate isolate hides all the um hides everything except for what you selected basically um and that's super useful you know like that's you just use that in tandem with stuff like hide which is control it's control h on the keyboard um control it's control h to hide control shift h to show selected and then you can choose what you want to show or you can also do control alt h to show everything um and then there's two types of locks in rhino so in rhino there's layer locking and there's also object locking so let's say for example like the railings i have here on this layer i can i can lock just the railing layer right Wait, what is, yeah so like, i can't select the railing layer but i think if i have a duplicate here actually do i oh i don't know anyways like so now i can't select the railing layer but what you can also do is you can click on an object you can click on an object and then just type lock and that's object lock and you can also just type unlock to unlock all your locked objects and that has nothing to do with the layers so there's actually like two types of locking um in rhino and then change to current layer so let's say if you're working on a different layer and let's say i want to put this on my railing layer right what is it on now it's on default so i want to put this on the railing layer i have to go i have to right click and i have to go change object layer right and i'll change it to my current layer so now that if i turn off default it's still here right because it's on railing now but another way to do that is if i were to i think this is still on the wrong layer okay yeah so if now it's back on default if i were to type change to current layer um it would do the, essentially the same thing as right clicking over here and going to change object layer um but i have this match to ch so like it's super fast super easy named views okay so let's say you want to you know start doing a drawing of this building and just isolate it um so let's say you want to do a drawing of this building uh and you want to figure out like a very nice view for it and you don't want to lose that view and you want to have like a couple options maybe you want to present to your friends or your boss or your prof or you know yeah so you can just go to named views panel and then you can save as and then you can say this is like oh name view option one and then you want to get like another option you can do like name view option two right and then from here you can just switch um between these views and then you can do your drawings as such which is super useful um but while you're here you can also mess with the camera settings so if you go to properties and there's a little camera looking thing here for the view you can mess with your lens length oh, lens length i cannot speak um and so you can input like a value for this and it basically like changes the length of your lens as if you were a camera um, but what you can do is also you can do zoom lens and then you can drag to actually adjust the value um, in a more like live fashion change this back to 50 and that's really helpful for trying to get like the kind of view you want um, yeah and also for outlining stuff like if you just select like this building and I want to do an outline I can do mesh outline 
um, and then from the mesh outline from the mesh outline you see it creates an outline of the building but it's on it's on this really weird plane that's like perpendicular to my view and so I can now take this outline and then I make 2d it right and then when I make 2d it I have the outline of the building flat um, and what you can do is you can actually just map this to like a single command I don't remember what I have it mapped to um, I have it mapped to okay All right, you can map this to a single command and then it just executes the mesh outline and the, the make 2d at once right which is makes it faster uh, what else you can do okay so clipping planes um, this is like kind of an issue that this is an issue that happens with clipping planes sometimes where you know maybe you're not familiar with using clipping planes a lot and then you're like oh no like why isn't my clipping plane working so a clipping plane basically allows you to it's just a plane that allows you to sort of like section objects um, so that you can just see like inside of them and stuff like that which is super useful but when you change your viewport um, as you can see here the clipping plane is still selected but it's not actually clipping anything now um, in my other viewports it's only working in this one viewport so you have to go to like you have to select the viewport that you want it to show in uh, select the clipping plane and then do enable clipping plane as the command and then that enables the clipping plane in that viewport and then you can also do section which is another useful command so if I do section, I select my object, and then I draw a section line. Um, it basically draws the section in curves for me at that. It basically just draws the section <laughs> at that at that section line, right? And they can use this to like do drawings with it, whatever. Um, yeah, let's talk about display options. So Rhino has a bunch of display options um, in whatever view you're using. So like if I set it to rendered. Um, and you go to the display tab, you can actually choose a lot of the um, you can choose a lot of the settings with how your thing looks, right? So like you can turn shadows on and off, you can turn the ISO curves on and off, uh, the surface edges, um, the tangent edges, which are like these bad boys over here, uh, the tangent seams, which would be like something like this. Um, yeah, and there's like there's like a billion options here that you can just sort of play around with. Those are like sort of the main ones, um, and this way you can maybe you know just export like quick, um, quick views of your object so you can sort of get feedback on it or whatever project you're working on. And to do that, you know sometimes people are like, oh, they press like print screen and stuff, but then like you can see the Rhino window. Um, one one way of communicating quickly is if you hold. Windows key shift S, it brings up the snipping tool, and then you can use this to select like whatever you want to cut out. And then you cut it out, and then like you can open it up again and like doodle on it, right? Like you're like, oh, what the heck is this? What is this fountain? Like, uh, you know, like, I'm joking. I, I love the fountain. Not really. <laughs> but that's, that's one way to do things. Um, another way to, let's say, like send a file to people is like view capture there's two, view capture the clipboard, um, which just essentially saves this viewport to your clipboard, and then you can go and like paste it in a chat or something, or you can do view capture to file. And view capture to file saves this as a file, you know, you can you have options for like turning on the background, etc. And then there's also the scale. Um, scale here is actually just like a multiplication of like the number of pixels. So it's kind of like there's the resolution and then there's the scale um, and it actually just like kind of increases the quality or like the size of the image. Actually, I, I, I would need to clarify that. I'm not actually sure how that works, but um, these are essentially like the basic options. And then you export it to a file and then you can just save it as whatever, you know, PNG or JPEG or whatever, and then send it to your friends and family. Okay, I think... Oh, another good thing you can do is 
in Illustrator. This is not exactly Rhino, but um, sometimes maybe you want to draw people. And where's my downloaded person? Or like you want to draw people or you want to trace certain images, then you can use... I can't find my... Oh, it's on the desktop. My bad. So... Right, so like if you have like an image of a person, you know, you want to draw like a silhouette or something, you can get like a silhouette of a person off the internet, but this is still a image, right? Like you can't, you can put this in Rhino, but it's not a vector, right? And so you can't really adjust this line weight or anything. Um, so what you can do is you can actually bring it to Illustrator and then you can do image trace. And do black and white logo here. And image trace essentially turns this into a vector, right? And you can expand it, um, you know, and then you can like export it, right? You can save this as a, oh, you can save as an SVG, like a vector file format, or you can save it as like a PDF. And then from there, you can actually just bring it into, where's my file? Where is my file? Am I blind? Wait. Where did I save it to? Okay, here it is, yeah. So, oh, I'm blind. You can save it as SVG or like a PDF and then you can bring it into, insert it into your Rhino. Right. And then you choose an insertion point and here you have a vector file of the person well a vector of the person and then now you can like put them in there and then um export them alongside your drawing or something like that right or you can um you can also get like his silhouette and like hatch it although that hatched everything i just want the person yeah so sometimes it's going to be grouped together because like there's many layers to it so you just have to keep like ungrouping uh, which is control shift G or you can just type ungroup and then um, pull apart the layers of it to like find which ones you need right and that's super useful so you don't have to go in and actually like trace the image um, which is also another option which is helpful sometimes like you can drag images into Rhino insert it as a picture I'm not sure why this is not working I think it's because it's a PNG but I'm not sure. Uh, why are you like that? What is this? Yeah, you can. Okay, so you can like pull in images into Rhino and then, you know, trace over them uh, by drawing polylines and stuff like that. Um, which is also super useful, like tracing certain. Tracing certain images is like super useful. Um, and I think that is it for a bunch of Rhino tips that maybe you didn't know before. So hopefully you learned something. If you didn't, hopefully I learned something, I don't know. Um, yeah, and I think that is basically the end of the series. So good luck with whatever you're doing. Thank you.